Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and um, thank you for convening a great conversation uh, around the vital role uh, that America's expanding natural gas resources uh, can play in our energy future. Uh, if you'll forgive me, I'm a member of the Judiciary Committee as well, and we are in the midst of what some may know is a controversial issue. A, a very easy, really, we're going to have this all hammered out by lunchtime, we think. I'm, <laughs> I'm joking, sadly. Uh, we have 300 amendments. I think we've made it through 34 so far after uh, 10 hours of work. So if I might just uh, briefly, I, I came out of manufacturing uh, and am very excited about the implications uh, for manufacturing, um, one of our more energy intensive sectors. And so uh, whether it's a chemical manufacturing or it's tires or it's glass or it's steel, um, the dramatic increase in natural gas of pricing and reliability, I think, is a real driver. Um, and uh, folks uh, from the American Chemistry Council uh, shared with me a list of between 80 and $100 billion worth of new facilities uh, that are being either uh, cited or uh, reshored, as it were, or onshored. Um, in one particularly compelling case, I thought a story of a plant being lifted up from Chile and uh, barged back to the United States uh, for production. Um, so some of them are completely new, some of them are expansions, and uh, different associations score it differently, whether it's 75, 80, or 100 billion. But that is a really dramatic investment in infrastructure. Um, what are the most important aspects of infrastructure um, to deliver and to access uh, this expanding supply that will be essential to accelerating that renaissance in American energy intensive manufacturing. I'll take an answer from anyone. Uh, I'm sorry, your question was what, what is needed? What do we need to do to develop further the infrastructure necessary to match this investment in the manufacturing capabilities? Okay. Yeah, I, th I think one thing that uh, everyone needs to be aware of is it's not just expanding the infrastructure for natural gas gathering or, or natural gas transmission. It's really a full value chain. Uh, when when ENP producers drill for oil and gas, uh, you have to build the infrastructure for the disposition of the oil, the condensate. The natural gas itself has to be treated for inerts. It has to be processed for NGLs. Uh, the NGLs have to be transported and fractionated and then cracked to make plastic and rubber products and exported or consumed in housing and auto and so forth. So it's not just the gas infrastructure that uh, really needs to be enhanced. Uh, but it's the whole vertical value chain that has to be looked at. But uh, there is an abundance of natural gas out there. It's affordable. It's clean burning. Uh, there's a lot of it we can't get to due to uh, permitting processes have delayed us. Enforcement processes have delayed us in, in getting to uh, the, the production. So the gas that's being flared, actually, you're actually flaring the raw gas, which includes all the natural gas liquids. And if you think about it, once gas is processed and natural gas liquids are extracted, 85% of those natural gas liquids are, are never combusted if you can get them to market uh, to produce polyethylene and polypropylene. But if you're flaring at the wellhead, you're wasting economic value, you're creating emissions, and you're combusting components that you shouldn't be combusting. Uh, but my, I guess my answer to you is that, you know, um, regulation, uh, reasonable regulation that would work with us. Uh, that used to take 30, 60 days for per permitting processes, and now taking 18 months. And so it's delaying us getting to the production, and it's uh, curtailing natural gas, and it's slowing development from EMP producers. So capturing the entire value, the wet gas as well as the dry gas, the feedstock as well as the, the, the sort of raw energy um, requires an entire value chain, and you would cite permitting as the single biggest barrier to a timely and appropriate um, utilization of that whole range of value out of these newly expanded resources. It has been the increasing burden on the industry. Like I said, we've gone from 60 days to get a permit to build a plant, now it's 18 months. You can't start construction until you get your permit. And then once you get your permit, it takes a good 12 months to build the plants. And so it's not just pipeline transmission. So instead of uh, 12 months to execute on some major pipeline and processing plant to get the natural gas in the transmission lines, now you're looking at two to three years.